and say, John Kanaka Naka to lie. There's work tomorrow. But hey guys, no Backwaters and Backroads here, obviously. I just want to show you this boat. So I'm always trying to convey this thing, you know, about this neck of the woods as part of the world up here in the UP of Michigan. And I think this will be a good way to do it, or it'll be about my best attempt so far. So my friend here, I'm lucky enough to have made friends with a, with an old school Uper, um Finland fella, Finnish, um, Dennis Forslund, Forslund, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Forslund. Yeah. Forslund. Forslund. He, uh, he used to fish out of Black River Harbor, which is a little special spot on the other side of the Porcupine Mountains. I'm going to, I'm going to put a link below to show you guys that area there's also a really good book written about it which i will link to as well but uh what i wanted to try to show you guys today in this video is is how dennis took this very simple boat it's just an 18 foot um you know pretty common boat though it has, does have some cool characteristics that made it worth what he did to it um and it even started out as an inboard outboard and they him and his buddy took the time and they put a uh, an outboard well in this as you can see and just kept it tiller and uh, put a honda 50 horse in the back four stroke and then you know went through all the trouble to put foam in it make it nice and quiet and uh more buoyancy and it's just it's a really cool example of like you know in this age of people spending loads of money on you know spending too much money to get out there and fish um the truth is if you have a few skills you can put together a boat that sometimes you'll see in a field for a couple hundred bucks. Sometimes they're giveaways. And you put a little work into them and you can make them really capable boats. And, and this would be an example. So uh, take a look at this video I put together for you guys and tell me what you think. I need some. You want a beer? I love one. Okay. I got one on a long neck Budweiser. I Great. It for you, right? I'll, oh. Yes. Sounds Ooh, wonderful. I'll get us one. Okay. Please continue, Dennis. Go ahead. I'm just kind of taking footage as you talk, oh, if that's okay with you. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's only an 18-foot Starcraft, but we built a boat out of it. And this is all recycled milk jugs stuff here. Mm -hmm. What do they call this stuff? Uh, Did they make, like, uh, cutting boards out of it and stuff like, like that? that? This ain't Apex. This is recycled milk jugs. Oh, okay. And then we flipped it upside down, and there's all closed cell foam underneath the decks here. Half inch riveted in, two layers of fiberglass, <laughs> and then uh, mason sands and epoxy on top of that. And a big tiller, big 50 horsepower Honda tiller. Yeah. That is so cool. I mean, and just then I got my simplifies. GPS right here and everything map, and then I got my depth finder here so I can sit here and watch everything. Like right here and right there. And wavy making a racket here. And uh, a lot of times I'll just run the 50 here, you know. Mm hmm. And uh, that's a kick, you know. And then I got my three six gallon fuel tanks up in the front there, and underneath the fuel tank, that's all filled with foam and plywood before we we did that. Now, did you um, fill it with foam for buoyancy reasons? Well, to quiet it up too, and buoyancy besides. Okay. And uh, you never, and <clears throat> this late early vintage Chris or a Starcraft has a big dead rise that comes all the way from the front, just like a Bertram, carries all the way to the transom. And they don't make boats much like that anymore. They're flat in the transom and everything else, mm -hmm. unless you get a real high end, but. So you have, a, what you're saying is you have a V all the way to the back. Yep, okay. it's called a very uh, dead rise. It goes all the way to the back, and this thing don't pound. Yeah. And you can be in, people, Jimmy Johnson had boats all his life, you never think you're in a fire, uh, aluminum boat with, with this yeah. because yeah, especially so, with the foam all bad, especially with the foam, eh? Yeah, yeah. the foam. And now, yeah, it's, it's buoyancy, you know. Yeah. Now, and then the center of gravity on this boat and everything, because it was an inboard outboard, is low, and we left the decks exactly like they were. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then I got that little thing there with the bilge pump in the back there, so all the water will go back there. So it goes under the floor and then eventually collects in the back and then the bilge pump kicks yeah, it, it out. Yeah, all the limber holes. Mm -hmm. I just love the big just a tiller. Flayboard there that I got there sitting there. It was right here. Yeah. 
And, and we, it, that tub, we fabricated the tub. There, like I said, this was in the board out for it, so we had to take yeah. all. You would stuff never out. would know though, you know. And mm -hmm. I, I know what you mean by having a little like a kicker plate coming up. Yeah. And then I just left it at the same height down there as it was when it was in the board out board there, and then we cut that all out and went up again, you know. Mm -hmm. And we fiberglassed it, and then we made the this and that, and little pockets here and there. And, mm -hmm. You know, and, so so Dennis, um, folks that. Very few people understand or know about this type of fishing um, This with the skis. Could you take a moment or two and just explain how that works? Yeah, I guess I could. Uh, this, this fishing was developed at Black River Harbor by a man named Gus Kuzmi. Uh, he invented the, the ski system of fishing to run more lines because uh, the fishing had deteriorated on Lake Superior and on mostly all the other Great Lakes in the late 50s into the 60s because of overfishing by commercial netting and the sea lamprey. Both contributes to, to the demise of the lake troll. Mm -hmm. And Black River Harbor was a, a very trolling community over there. There was, when I went there in 67 and started fishing out of there, I think there was 14 charter boats. Well, now there's one or two maybe, but. Mm -hmm. So Gus developed this trigger mechanism where you could run out multiple lines just like inline boards from your vessel. And, but these are different, they, they're a drop line. Mm -hmm. So, the system starts with steel lines. System starts with steel lines. These happen to be all 60 feet long. Mm -hmm. So, first thing you do, is you put a two pound sinker on your steel line. Then, follow it up. Follow it up with a spoon. Mm -hmm. These were also made by Gus Kuzmi, Finn Company. Yeah, I remember the, the Finn, I I've, I've, have a few of them. They're coveted. So, these leaders are like 20 feet long. So you're trolling along, you throw your lure in the water, lure goes out 20 feet. Lure goes out 20 feet. Mm -hmm. Stainless steel clip at the end of that. Mm -hmm. That comes off. we have been drinking a little bit. That comes off, that goes on a, a, we call these stations. Okay. There's a, a barrel uh, crimper there that goes on there, a sleeve that, so yeah. it can't go up or down. Okay. So this goes down in the water. Okay. 20 feet. Goes down 15 feet. Goes down 15 feet into the water until we find another station like this. Yeah. We hook okay. another spoon on there. Okay. We've got another so they're, 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 you're kind of you're like staggering or layering them. We're stacking them. Stacking them. That's Every the word I was looking feet. for. Okay. This happens to be 60 feet foot line. So each line on this reel is 60 feet long. Okay. So we'll put uh, you're allowed three lines and six hooks in the state of Michigan. Okay. So say we've got uh, a few two people on board. So we're gonna put uh, three lines on this line. We'll put one there on it with a sinker. We'll put one here. That's 60 feet, this is 45 feet. The next station will be 30 feet. Okay. So we have three spoons on a line now. One yeah. at 60, one at 45, one at 30. Okay. At the end of all these lines, there's a barrel swivel. I don't have one. There's a barrel swivel. So, these are trolling skis. Gus Kuzmi invented these <laughs> along with the help of Herb Isaacson and Doug Allen and at Black River Harbor. And they, these were also patented. The patent date has run out. You can't get these anymore. Mm -hmm. I have a couple that I, you wouldn't believe it, but I got a couple at a yard sale. They're the ori some originals. I should show them to you. Okay. So now we've got our three spoons, weight. They go on the release right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this would be number two ski, it'd be out there 100 feet. So, we have number one is 60 feet from the boat, 50 feet from that is number two, another 50 feet from that is number three. And then if you have a higher mast, you can go farther. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you have a tow line in between that it's just a nylon line like this. So to make things easy to see, after that ski's out there 60 feet and the tow line is there, this goes on to the mass like this. And it goes out, out in the water. Okay. So we, it go, as we're pulling from the side of the ski now, it goes out just like an inline board. Okay. And the reason we have bungee cords on here is because when the waves and winds come in at, it won't trip the ski. Because if we want to trip the ski from the boat, we'd give a real quick trip on this and it would trip from the boat. Gotcha. But we don't want it to trip unless there's a fish on it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like sitting, a, um, you know, a clip on a downrigger ball, you know, different. Yeah. To different. So now we've got our three spoons on a line. All these different adjustments on these holes are for different settings. They're set for about three pounds right now, three and a half pounds okay. for a fish. Is that the pattern? Pulling along and we get a strike. Is that the patented mechanism you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. So we get a strike on a fish. Mm -hmm. Pulls it out from the side. It doesn't pull from the side anymore. Mm -hmm. The ski pendulums out to the back of the boat. Mm -hmm. You pull the ski into the boat, hook it up to the line, Reel the steel line up until you find which leader the fish is on. Hand line that leader in, net the fish. Put yep. everything back together, reset the ski, because each line, each line is just so many feet long. Mm -hmm. So, you set reset the ski, you let the ski out to the back of the boat, it comes to the end of that line, it pulls right back into position. And you, you do get tangled sometimes, but yeah. uh, if you know what you're doing, you know, you're know you pretty good yeah. to go. So it sounds like there is quite a few steps to what you're talking about, but the benefit is you get to have a lot more lines out per person. Right. And these lines are away from the boat. So when you're fishing shallow lines uh, in early in the year with 30-foot droppers, say from here, the boat will come through that, and the fish are high in the water column. Boat comes, fish separate from away from the boat. Mm -hmm. Well, these skis are out there mm -hmm. where the fish are. Yeah. And all of a sudden they see that spoon come by or plug yeah. or whatever you got on You're, you're just bait. catching a lot more fish. And you catch a lot more fish. Yeah. And they were developed because of the, there was a lot fewer fish and more fishermen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so sometimes when the fishing gets tough, we use these. Yeah. <laughs> well, you must like it. I know you're one of the originals and um, I, I, I guess you know, you just, th this is a, this is a type of fishing. I mean, how many 18 foot boats use this type of fishing? Are you, is it? Pardon? How many 18 foot boats out there at this point are using, um, you know, skis for fishing? Well, very few. Yeah. Uh, everybody's getting away from them. It's the last stronghold more or less is Black River Harbor. Okay. They do use them at Saxon Harbor. There's a few people that use them here in Ontonagon. As far as that, it's almost non-existent. Yeah. You can't buy these anymore. Gus Kuzmi passed away. Oh man, it must be 15, 20 years now. Mm -hmm. and, I'm going to have uh, to show you the two I got. I think they're a, originals. A, a guy was making them out of stainless steel on an old Kuzmi trigger. This is the last one that he made here. Uh, this trigger here. It's all hardened brass and everything. But a guy was making them on Sac um, Ashton, Wisconsin on a stainless steel. And I'm not sure if he's making them or not. And these are all cedar. Um, Real light cedar, feel like that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's real light. Yeah. And you could run a three pound weight on this and you would go deeper in the water column, but then you got a two pound fish and a three pound weight, then it's more to reel in. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And what we did over the years, you started off with a 125 pound test line mm -hmm. and gusts start going down less and less and less and less and less. And now, uh, charter captain at Black River Harbor named James Johnson. He went down to 60 pound wire line. It's, it's, it's smaller in diameter, so it'll go deeper in the water with a two pound sinker. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But um, that's the system we use. And it produces. <laughs> and that's what counts. <laughs> and we used them in Lake Michigan on salmon, especially when the salmon got smaller. And as long as we use 30 pound test liters here on our spoons, we can hold them, but if a king salmon is 
over 20 pounds, you're gonna have your hands full. Yeah. Because they'll pull this ski and everything to the other side of the boat and the other ski and you gotta tangle and yeah. you gotta tangle and you got no fish. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What a beautiful house. <clears throat> That's that brown she caught right there. What a beauty. And guys, look at this. They have these unique markings on them. Telltales. And Jim Ailey malted that. He did a really good job. And this I got 19... That's 16 pounds, 4 ounces. That came out of the Big Heron River on a fly rod. Wow. That's a steelhead, correct? That's a steelhead, Rainbow Trove. Wow. Lake Superior. Yeah. Not Lake Michigan. That's big for Lake Superior. Yeah. And that's come out, I told you that. That was 42 inches, 27 pounds, tails 11 inches, tip to tip. Beauty. Clean. Not a mark on it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. No lamprey scars, nothing. Now you said you had a coastie. Oh yeah. Maybe we'll find that. You ever watch Jimmy Stewart's Winchester 73? No. That's, win that's a 73 Winchester right there. I, the, uh, the octagon barrel. Is yeah, very... It's a Winchester 73, 3220. Nice. In 1890. It's loaded. Did you get that bobcat? Uh, no. There's that coaster brook troll. Okay, guys, this is like the holy grail of fish that you can catch in Lake Superior right there. Coasty. <clears throat> Dennis, would you just give me a quick version of, of how you caught that fish and where? Well, I caught it casting off the icebergs in February right here at uh, Silver City by the state park. Cut on a two-fifth ounce little Cleo orange and gold. Is it rare to have a coastie come down here? No, I think there's quite a few around, but nobody's really fishing for them, you know. Yeah. I think they're shore fishing. Yeah. Everybody's either fishing too deep or too far or whatever, but the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the state and the tribe, they're trying to bring the coaster brook trout back. They don't want any non indigenous fish all they want is lake trout, whitefish, herring, and coastal brook trout. They don't want salmon, they don't want browns, they don't want rainbows, they don't want anything. Mm. They want sturgeon too. Mm. Mm. Uh, isn't it, well, I'll, I'll talk about that after I turn the camera off. <laughs> I, I, I think there's a lot of debates on that. I, I see you have another fish up here. Can you tell me about that one? Yeah, my dad caught that. There was a walleye there. It's both. 29 inches or something, we caught it in Langford Lake. My dad's passed away, it was the biggest walleye ever he caught. It was maybe eight and a half pounds, nine pounds, something like that. We never did weigh it. And I said, oh, I'll mount it for you. Well, when he passed, I brought it to my house here. Yeah, So that's beautiful. You know, I can tell that you're really a sportsman. You're like an original old school type sportsman that uh, that's, that's a dying breed, and um, it, it inspires me a lot. I, I feel like I was kind of born a generation or two too late because it really resonates with my soul. And when I talk to you and I listen to your stories, it's like I just I feel like you just lived in a golden time. Well, I'm going to show you something. I'll bring you a, You want to read about a good time here? You take this home with you. 
one of my fa favorite places. Well, I know that book. I, I've had a couple copies. I've given them to folks. I've read it backwards and forwards. Okay. It's a great book. Well, you must have read about me in there, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how I originally knew you and Jimmy Johnson. Oh, and okay. Yeah. No, you guys were legendary. And then, years ago, I don't know about... We got... There's a bunch of pictures in here from Alaska, but uh, we won't get into that now. Up here, commercial fishing and scrabbing. And yeah. And king salmon caught. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Dennis, before I turn the camera off, would there be anything else that would be kind of a special, maybe some a special story or something you could point out to us? And Pardon? Is there something, before I turn the camera off, that you could point out, like in your, your uh, you know, the things you have in this room that you could, you would tell a story about, or... Well, everything in this room got a story, but uh, I guess the th main thing I would say is do like they said on TV. Eat, slip, sleep, go fishing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's I cute. shot all these bucks up here. Yeah. But uh, Did you get that black bear? No, my dad shot that at the camp. Okay. And I had a rug made for him. <laughs> that's a nice one. The only black bear, I don't care to shoot a bear at and don't bother me. Yeah. They keep uh, tearing o tearing off the gates on my uh, shed out there at Potato Farm. And that was the last, the only reason that little eight point buck is there, that's the last buck that my father shot right there. And that's the hat that he wore. Yeah. 1980, uh, I gotta put the lights on. 80. Uh, does it say on there? 1983. Oh, uh, 1993. Okay, yep. I was at our camp. That was the last buck he shot. He died at 90 years old. Wow. I think he was 85 then. Wow. Well, that's why it's there. <laughs> what is half? Cromer. <laughs> Stormy Cromer, made right in Ironwood, Michigan. Not too yeah, far well, from that here. That one was made, that's an original Cromer. That was before Stormy Cromer got it. This was made in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, it's just a Cromer. It's not a Stormy Cromer. Nope. It was before Jack would start making them. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, so if I'm not mistaken, you're you are Finlander, correct? Hundred percent. Long story. My name's Fordland, but it used to be Lasila. But they changed it because my grandpa, when he came from Finland, couldn't get a job at the Bessemer Mines because they weren't hiring any more Finlanders. <laughs> so he changed it to Forsland. Why? We don't know. Yeah. Swedish. That, that, you would think that would be Swedish, right? A Forsland yeah. or something. Or... Change it to Forsland. So. Yeah. But he got, mine, he got a job at the Colby Mine then. So yeah. we've been in Bessemer since the 1800s. Yeah. And your original last name is what again? Forsland. Yeah. I bet you said it was... Lassala. Uh, Lassala. That was my grandpa's name Then he came from Finland. Lassala. Yeah, that's definitely Finnish. Yep. So that's all we know. Yeah. Oh, big. So that's recent. No, that was... It's 2011. That was 2011. Yeah. I'm yet to catch a monster that, that big. Pound. I might catch one out at uh, Standard Rock eventually. This picture here, right here... We had rabbit dogs all our lives. That's my father, my brother, Slab Johnson, Mark Sable, myself, and Chris Wilson. We had 35 rabbits at 10.30 in the morning. Wow. Snowshoe rabbits. And you're running them with beagles? Yeah, there were seven guys. There were six guys in a picture, and the other guy took the pit, the, the picture. Yeah. The and was that local? Beagles. Was that around here? Well, that was in Ewan. Okay. Right there. You know, we had dogs, rabbit dogs, all our lives. And everybody in that picture, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. I don't know about, I'm not dead. Mark's alive. <laughs> and uh, Chris, I don't know about Chris. 